The following video about meditation includes clips from an interview between Dr. Josephine Briggs, Director of the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health at the National Institutes of Health, and Dr. Richard J. Davidson, Founder of the Center for Investigating Healthy Minds at the Wiseman Center, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Meditation is a mind and body practice. Although there are many different types of meditation, from a scientific perspective, they may all have at their core the ability to train attention. A person who is meditating uses certain techniques, such as a specific posture, focused attention, and an open attitude toward distractions. Every form of meditation in one way or another involves training attention. And if we go back to the beginning of scientific psychology, William James in his uh, classic tome, The Principles of Psychology, which was published in 1890, has a whole chapter on attention. And he says in that chapter, the faculty of voluntarily bringing back a wandering attention over and over again is the very root of judgment character and will. And he later goes on to say an education which should improve this faculty would be the education par excellence. Uh, and so I think he had the intuition that one, uh, that, uh, that training attention was something really important mm -hmm. um, for uh, core skills of uh, what it means to be human. Most types of meditation originated in ancient religious and spiritual traditions. Uh, I, I think in ancient times, in, in the original context in which these practices emerged, people did these practices really not for their um, direct health benefits, but rather for their impact on um, broader dimensions of well-being. Uh, and one can even say uh, 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 things like liberation, whatever that might mean. Right. Um, they, they were uh, their reasons that I think are quite different from the intentions that motivate most people today in our modern cultures. Pain, anxiety, stress, insomnia, depression, and the physical and emotional symptoms that may be associated with chronic illnesses are all common in today's society. And at the same time, statistics show that many people use mind and body practices on a regular basis. In 2012, 18 million people used meditation, according to a nationwide survey. Is there a connection? So today we see people coming to these practices because they feel like uh, they're overwhelmed. Uh, right. They're very stressed in their life. They may have chronic pain. Yeah. To quiet the soul or to quiet. To, to quiet the soul, soul to, uh, to produce uh, uh, some uh, modicum of uh, equanimity. Uh, uh, they often feel like their lives as they currently are uh, are constructing them, are, are, uh, are not just not working, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they want some kind of other um, strategy to help them cope with, the, with life slings and arrows. Right. Uh, and I think that today we see that as um, really a, a central motivation for an intention for why people come to the practice, which I think is very different than um, 2,000 years ago, uh, the central intention was, was really different. For more information, please visit nccih.nih.gov meditation.